Greetings, Dr. Ron Lewert here. Welcome to my YouTube page. Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, they're mostly educational and informative, at least in intent. This is another one that uh, is intended to educate and inform families and uh, friends and relatives. So if you enjoy the information, please like and subscribe and pass it along to those whom you love and anybody else. This is good information for general safety. So we're going to discuss the importance of seat belts. This information is gotten um, in its entirety from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety website. I put together a slide presentation and a small video to educate and explain the importance of why all occupants in the vehicle, not just the driver, but all occupants, including especially including the rear seat occupants, should be belted. In addition to this information, I'm going to show you how to um, get your children um, that are under 57 inches tall buckled into a child restraint system that will protect them in case they are involved in a crash. So let's go through the slides. Uh, once again, please like and subscribe. And if you have questions or comments, I am open to uh, anything that is intelligent uh, in terms of criticism or suggestion. So let's take a look. So today we want to talk to you about some really important stuff to know about seatbelts. I'm Dr. Ron Lewert. My business is Medical Consultants of South Florida. Um, you can check our website out at medconsultantsflorida.com. And the first slide discusses some facts and statistics about seatbelts. So let's go over these numbers. You'll see a 45 and 60% number. And um, these pertain to drivers, at least the 45% number, or front seat passengers in a vehicle, in a car, rather. Um, so this is pertinent to cars. Proper use of the lap belt and shoulder harness in a car, if you're the driver or front seat passenger, will reduce your risk of fatality or fatal injury by 45%. If you are the driver or front seat passenger of an SUV, van, or pickup truck, the proper use of your lap belt and shoulder harness reduces the risk of fatal injury by 60%. In other words, drivers and front seat passengers of cars, SUVs, vans, and pickups will reduce their risk of a fatality if involved in a crash by almost 45 to 60% on the average, that's about 50%. Sadly, however, nearly half of those who die in crashes are not wearing their seatbelt. So a significant number of people could survive crashes or would have survived crashes had they been wearing their seatbelt. Some of those unbelted uh, passengers who don't survive a crash, in fact, a good portion of them are unbelted. So unbelted occupants place other people in the vehicle at significant risk for injury or fatality. So in a frontal crash, drivers and front seat passengers are at increased risk of injury from an unbelted back seat passenger. And in a side impact crash, passengers sitting next to an unbelted passenger are, increased, are at increased risk of injury as well. So exposure to these unbelted occupants, either beside you or behind you, can increase the risk of injury or death to other occupants, including yourself, by 40%. So in a frontal crash, if you have an unbelted passenger behind you and you're the driver, you, the driver, have an increased, increased risk of fatality or serious injury by 137%. In other words, that rear seat passenger who is unbelted could fly into the back of your seat or into you push you into the airbag and steering wheel and kill you. That's a very serious statistic there. So make sure we have all of our occupants belted. So 
what do seatbelts really do? What do they really do in terms of practical, statistical, and repeatable data? Um, we find that they definitely prevent occupants from being ejected from the vehicle. That's a really big one. Uh, the seatbelts also keep people from colliding with the vehicle's interior or other passengers during the crash. So even though a vehicle may have crashed into an object or may have slowed down after colliding into a vehicle or object, those unbelted occupants <clears throat> on the, in the interior of the vehicle will keep moving at the same travel speed that the car was traveling before it came to a stop. So when you're driving in a vehicle that's traveling 50 miles an hour, you're traveling 50 miles an hour. When the vehicle comes to a stop because it hits a pole or another vehicle, you're going to keep traveling at 50 miles per hour until you come to a stop and what should stop you is the lap belt and shoulder harness. However, the interior of the vehicle or some component thereof will be the stopping force if you are an unbelted occupant. And that will significantly increase your risk of fatality. So seatbelts help to prevent or reduce injuries from this secondary collision, either you colliding with the seat in front of you, the dashboard or the windshield, and it does so by securing people to their seats so they slow down with the vehicle as its crash zone absorbs most of the kinetic energy associated with the vehicle and the occupant's pre-crash motion. This is known as ride down. Ride down is very important. So the belt gives you a chance. Um, it slows you down as the vehicle slows down and prevents you from striking the interior of the vehicle at the same rate that you would if you were not wearing the belt. Additionally, seat belts manage collision forces across your body. So worn properly, the belts are designed to spread crash forces across, across the stronger bony parts of your body, including the shoulder, the rib cage, and the pelvis. However, an improperly worn seat belt in a child or adult exposes them to significant increases in risk of serious or fatal injury, such as fractures to the cervical or lumbar vertebrae. That would be a belt that possibly rides high on the neck or up into the abdomen. We can see vascular injuries to the neck, injuries to the abdominal organs or mesentery. We can see vascular injuries of the abdomen, injuries to the bladder, sternum, aorta, clavicle, or the shoulder. This is an illustration here from the Insurance Institute of a child restraint system with proper belt placement. So this is um, a child restraint system that is significant for reducing injuries to the head and torso because of its design. Uh, as a side topic here, uh, a lot of parents will take their kids out of this apparatus and just let them sit on the booster. However, that causes problems because the routing of the belt is part of what this whole mechanism does. So if you put your kid in just the booster, chances are the belt will ride high on the abdomen or up onto the cervical spine and potentially cause very serious injuries for the child. So we have to keep our kids in, in this whole setup here until they're about 57 inches or at least 57 inches tall. So we'll switch from the five point harness, generally ages from four to eight, once they get eight years old or a little bit uh, taller so they don't fit in that five point harness, they should go in one of these child restraint systems. So the lap belt should come across the thighs, okay? Should not be higher on the abdomen, okay? So this is properly placed. And then the shoulder belt should come across the shoulder, clavicle, sternum, and then uh, fix into the buckle or where the harness is supposed to be placed. And finally, this is the video from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. This emphasizes, and it's quite 
graphic, the absolute need for all occupants in the vehicle to wear the seatbelt, and it shows the significant injury potential uh, for those occupants and other people in the car as a result of unbelted occupants. So let's take a look. Notice the belted driver and the unbelted rear passenger. seat of someone else's car or use uber or lyft the institute survey found that full-time belt use is lower in the rear seat and that's especially true for people who primarily get around by taxi or ride hailing service less than 60 percent of people who said they frequently take taxis or use ride hailing services said they always wear their belt people who reported buckling up less often were asked for their reasons a quarter of respondents said they believe the rear seat is safer so using a belt there is unnecessary. If you're not belted in the rear, you're putting yourself at risk and you're also putting other people in the vehicle at risk. People belted in the front seat can be injured or killed by unbelted occupants in the rear flying forward in a crash. We recently conducted a test to show what can happen when there's a crash and the person in the back is unbuckled. In a simulated 35 mile per hour impact, the unbelted dummy slams into the back of the driver's seat, pushing the driver dummy into the deploying airbag and steering wheel. Drivers are twice as likely to be killed in crashes when the occupant behind them is unrestrained. All but one state requires adult front seat occupants to use safety belts, but rear seat passengers are covered by laws in only 29 states and DC. Only 20 have primary enforcement, which means a police officer can stop the motorist for the seatbelt violation alone. Stronger laws would help, but technology could also boost belt use. Studies show that persistent belt reminders are effective at getting front seat occupants to buckle up. These systems are common for the front seat of new vehicles, but few vehicles sold in the US have belt reminder systems for the rear seat. Although safety belts are proven to save lives, more than half of the people who die in passenger vehicle crashes in the U.S. are unbelted. 